Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of my Vegas Golden Knights franchise mode series right here on NHL 19. And today, along from, you know, alongside the fact that I'll probably aggravate somebody, as I've been doing a lot lately for mispronouncing certain names, sorry, uh, along with that, we begin Season 2 with the Golden Knights. Now, in the last episode, of course, we went through the offseason. Uh, the main team, of course, is looking pretty good now, especially with the addition of Artemi Panarin. The big thing, though, of course, is that we did end up signing quite a few free agents who arguably shouldn't have been there. Am I expecting the majority of them to be good? No, because I know the majority of them aren't that good. I've been through the roster and am continuing to go through the process of going through the roster. I know how underrated a lot of these guys are, but on the bright side, figured it was easier to just go ahead and sign some younger players and have them be in the AHL for the next few seasons, as opposed to every year, you know, signing and going with certain, you know, 74 to 77 overall guys and constantly flipping players, which people half the time are like, well, why don't you just sign younger players? So we did that on this occasion. So this is the team that we're running with through the preseason at the moment. Uh, especially, you know, we're trying to get a look at how the defense is shaping up. And I know uh, the majority of them are underrated. But as I mentioned, it makes sense to do the, uh, to do so. Scouting-wise, we're also set up in a pretty solid way. I have everybody in pretty much their ideal spots. The big thing, though, that I need to focus on moving forward into next offseason is getting another one or two European scouts. Because right now, we really only have three scouts in Europe, and we're having to have all three of them have at least three locations. So we have a scout named Meze, for example, who's going to be taking care of Russia, the Swedish Alvenskin, or Alsvenskin, and the rest of the world. Uh, Ovechkin, that scout's going to be taking care of Sweden, the Czech Extra Liga, and Austria. Genze will be... Finland, Germany, and Switzerland. So we're stretching quite a few of these scouts thin. We need to make sure that we can find some top-notch European scouts moving forward. As Hudson Bembridge is a 63. That's not terrible for a 24th overall pick. The big question, though, is that potential. And that could be a very scary thing. Uh, Jet Wu being a 75, though. That could be nice. Kale Fleury not yet locked in. I know that's not his potential, but it's still going to be lower than what I'd like it to be. And Wyatt Wiley. Oof. Granted, that's not locked in either. The potential's okay, but I know that overall is not locked in either. But regardless, it's not looking that good. But we did allow these guys to get a little bit of playing time, which is uh, fine by me. So again, Fleury and Subban will get the call up. Oscar Dansk will be the main guy down in the AHL. And we know that pretty much all three of these guys, or all six of these guys, are getting dropped. We have our NHL lines pretty much good to go. Uh, with Jake Dotchin on the roster as well, who in real life just got released by Tampa. Allegedly for showing up, uh, being out of shape. So, you know, interesting situation there. Uh, Jet Wu is going to be back in junior for the next year, which I'm okay with, if that is the case. And then forward-wise... Again, pretty much everyone's going to be sent down. We have our roster set up, and it is good to go. At least I'd like to think so. So we'll send down everybody here. The AHL team, not sure how they'll do this season, but hopefully we can see some half-decent development uh, among the players that are actually going to be on that roster. I might have to set it up a little bit more. Uh, but Carrier will be the last guy that we have to call up here. That's 19, and Carrier is 20. The one extra forward, the one extra defenseman. Uh, let's see what this team looks like. If we go best lines, mainly to see uh, who the two healthy scratches are by default. And that would be Carpenter and Dotchin. So it actually has Holden in. I'm pretty sure it's just more a matter of him being pissed off than anything. I'm all right with it starting off Holden. Uh, we have one righty on this team, by the way. Not ideal. Uh, let's go ahead. How old's Colin Miller at this point? 26. He's not going to get better. We'll just go with what best lines is suggesting for now. Fourth line, we have Carrier, Peary, and Reeves, which I'm also all right with. Smith, Stashney, Hala, Tatar, Eakin, Tuck. That's not bad. It's not bad. Peary around 79 faceoffs. That's pretty good. I think we're all right. I think we're okay with that lineup. You could argue Carpenter. Would be a little bit better 
for that fourth line. I, th I think he's a more physical presence, but for now, unless Carrier has face-offs, he doesn't, which I swear he should. I'm pretty sure he used to play center, but uh, regardless, I'm just going to go with that for the moment. I'm tempted to switch people up as far as, you know, the wing spots. You know, I am actually going to have to do that uh, for the sake of the power play, mainly. And I don't know if I'm going to split up Panarin and March or so. I probably won't. But, you know, for example, putting Howla on the right wing, that could affect the way the power play and the way the extra lines go. So let me do that quickly. I'll fully optimize these lines and we'll be good to go. All right, we're good to go. Not only is the NHL lineup set, which of course this is what we're going to roll with, one slight change. Alex Tuck, the fact that he's still 23 years old and there is that outside chance of him developing, I'm going to start him on the second line as opposed to Eric Halla. And Carpenter is getting into the lineup to start. Defensively, we've kept it the same. Power play, it's going to look like this with just two defensemen, one on each unit, that being Theodore and Miller, and of course the goaltending and the healthy scratches, that's fairly obvious. Down in the AHL, uh, you know, forward-wise, we pretty much have everybody that we ended up signing. Defensively, we don't have room for everybody. Like I said, I went a tad bit overboard with some of those guys, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out throughout the year. At least we have plenty of depth. But it was a little bit surprising to me, of course, to see as many players on the open market as there were, but like I said, as I'm going through the roster and sending along my feedback for what I would change, uh, you know, I, it's it's frustrating to see so many players be that highly underrated. But hopefully, moving forward uh, with EA's official roster releases, hopefully at the very least with what I do and you know. The custom roster updates and all that. Unfortunately, of course, roster sharing is not in as March or so is going to be out for a little bit. That is unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. All right, so if we go best lines, you get the point as far as roster updates and everything like that. I think what we're going to do is put Hala there, still have Tuck there, and bump up Peary to the third line. That works for me. We'll have Eric Hall on that top line. And then power play-wise, we'll just let it be for now. The only guy missing is Thomas Tatar. Actually, he'll probably be pissed about that. So let's get Braden McNabb off of the power play. And we'll bring Tatar in. We'll just play him in that spot. It shouldn't make that much of a difference. But at the very least, with the custom roster updates, I'll be able to change whatever the hell I want and of course I'll be adding in players that EA themselves can't add in and of course as I continue along with that I'll document it all we'll have the videos the roster editing spectaculars like we always do although I will say this in terms of the first big roster editing spectacular really all it's going to be I think is over the next month leading up to NHL's opening night which is really three weeks away I think it's October 3rd the week of October 3rd at the very least in terms of when the season starts. Um, I'm going to be adding in players into the game. Uh, Nick Holden, let me guess. If I uh, if I go with kids gloves, you're going to be pissed, right? Let's go motivating. Doesn't, uh, yep, doesn't jive, whatever. God forbid. What, what person on earth is going to be like, hey, you know what? Screw it rough patches happen i believe in you you'll get it going and he'll just back like, you're fucking lying to me like come on i mm. i was hoping the morale system would be a little bit better this year in terms of responses like that like you need to handle it differently i don't know a single person in the world athlete or not that's gonna be like ah no nah, i don't believe you i think you're lying when you say you have faith in me like that's that's ridiculous that's absurd but regardless um again the first roster updating uh, the roster editing spectacular will be uh, just me mainly adding in players. I don't recommend doing a crazy amount of editing at this point in time as Jake Dodgson gets into the lineup. I don't recommend doing a crazy amount of editing at this point in time. Uh, simply put, they are going to be doing, they do it every year, a major overhaul to the CHL. Uh, if you look at the CHL right now, even with the roster update that just came out that involves Eric Carlson going to San Jose, even if you look at that roster update, uh, the CHL is a little bit of a mess. You still have plenty of 21-year-olds that are on those rosters that shouldn't be and won't be once that update is out. I'm pretty sure they're planning on having that update be out right around the same time as the opening night roster update. 
So right around then is when I would recommend you doing that deep dive in terms of editing. But you can add players in right now, and of course through the roster merging feature, you can still be good to go in terms of just creating players and then having them be switched over to that uh, to that roster update. So it's it's looking good on that front. Where hey, if you like adding in the Jack Hughes of the world then I will have the video for you in about three and a half weeks or so. That's what it's looking like at this point. Uh, that said, that was a nice little side tangent. Hopefully Jonathan Marcheseau can stay healthy. We're off to a pretty good start this season, and he... <sighs> okay. <sighs> yep, I knew it. It's, it's always a guarantee. If you play someone before they're 100% healthy... I saw, of course, I know Hollow was the one coming back. I saw he wasn't 100%, but I'm like, you know what? This should be fine. Maybe he'll be 100% before the first game of the season. No. No, he wasn't. We are just going to go best lines here, but god damn, that is annoying. He is out for another month. <sighs> right. It's a good thing we have our Tammy Panarin now, isn't it? In terms of having someone else who can, you know, easily be a part of the top six and put up points. I mean, help Panarin's better than March so, of course. So, we'll see how this goes. But, yeah, I wanted to touch up on that uh, that subject roster editing-wise. Uh, we will go... Wow, he's out until February brutal we actually don't have any forwards again i signed too many defensemen uh, that's a problem that'll fix itself soon with guys like zach white cloud their contracts are expiring at the end of the season so we should be okay all things considered as nate schmidt is back it says he's fully healthy do i believe you is the question he is at 100 percent cool so let's go best lions and again the only thing i'm going to change is going down to the power play taking McNabb off of the power play and bringing in Thomas Tatar. I gotta admit, in the future, it would be nice if there were certain settings for best lines where you could be like, hey, I want to run best lines, but here's what I want. Like, I want my first line to be my skill line. I want a second line to be a skill line. I want my third line to be defensively responsible, and my fourth line to be a checking line. And then, you know, for the power play, you say, how many defensemen do you want? So basically, you can set certain parameters and then go best lines, and it alters, you know, how it sets up the team. That would be tremendous because I would love to set it up uh, so that the power play has just one defenseman on each unit. And I could go best lines without having to change that every single time. Will that ever happen? Uh, not holding my breath, but it would be a really cool system to see added into the game. As we're actually going to take a look here. So Ferguson, congrats. You uh, at least got to sit on the bench for a little bit. Oscar Dansk is back in defensively so tishka is only a 63 huh he is only a 63 now jason garrison's here but he's not signed by us so it's all well and good there scooter vaughn casto we know how good robin Salo is not sure how good walford is i'm gonna bring i'm gonna bring walford into the lineup just for the moment just to see if he's half decent at all i mean white clouds 23 with that potential not really feeling it bronstrom Ooh, ooh, Robin Salo. I didn't think you were going to be that bad. I was thinking medium six. I didn't think Robin Salo was going to be that bad. That's, that's rough. Uh, Christian Molanin as well. That's also rough. Damn. Uh, so, Salo, uh, you're going to take a seat, and we'll see how good, or how bad, <laughs> I should say, Kale Flurry is, I guess. And we'll leave in White Cloud just because he's a 70. But that is brutal. Absolutely brutal. Not saying I'm going to renege here and end up getting rid of some of these guys for like 7th round draft picks. But I might. I might. Like I said, I expected them to be bad. Like I knew Robin Sala wasn't going to be like a low top 4. I expected medium 6 or even medium 7th. Uh, AHL top 2, huh? That is uh, that is one example of something that I am absolutely fighting for uh, in the near future here. What I want to do, actually, I want to go through this next month before I change up anything scouting-wise. Again, we have Meze in Russia, Ovechkin in Sweden, and Genza in the Finnish League. Liga, and we're going to have to move them around a little bit. Let's go best lines. March, uh, March or so is finally healthy for the first time 
in a long time. Defensively, we are good. McNabb will take a seat. Uh, Schmidt will also take a seat for Eric Halla. So let's bring in Halla. Because Tuck was there by default. And then McNabb will sit for Thomas Tatar. Let's see. We have multiple lefties. Right. Well, let's just go with Theodore and Halla, Tatar, and Chiller. And we'll do it that way. We should be good for the most part. Overall, I mean, I haven't been completely on point with being like, oh, look at how good we're doing this season. But we are doing well. I think that's to be expected with the team that we have. As, again, we need to get to scouting Finland. We need to get to scouting Germany. Especially with the Mod Cole being a top five projected pick. And, of course, this is the Alexis Lafreniere draft. Although, one would expect us to not be in the running for this. Uh, so, we are at the point where, let's double check here. Let's go double check something. As we lose in a shootout to Nashville. But, at least we end up getting a point. Let's see. I just realized I could have just hit the sign scout from the other page. But let's see what's going on with our scouts that we're going to be moving around. So Meze in Russia. Are there any top players that you haven't looked at? The answer is yes. So we're going to need you to look at Yuri Kaminsky. Uh, Grigorenko, we're going to need you to look at him as well. Okay, so clearly there's been a lot of discovery so far with the scout. Obviously, we have these guys in the ideal leagues first. You know, DEL, Switzerland, Czech Extra Liga. Those are secondary. Uh, but we really do need... We really do need these scouts to, stop, to start looking at some of these top guys. To be honest, I might give them a little bit more time. Let's take a look at Genza in uh, Finland. I'm probably butchering his name too, sorry. Uh, but let's see. Yeah, man, what are you doing? Like, they just have to be on Discovery. I'm going to give them a little bit more time. I'm going to give them a little bit more time. As it is uh, the threat of, you know, top-notch German players or top-notch uh, players from the Swiss League. I'm not overly threatened by... Please tell me that was onside. I'm sorry. Ah, I was offside. Fuck me. I'm watching Liverpool Tottenham right now as I'm recording this. I'm sorry. And Liverpool almost scored in under a minute. I got pumped. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Anyway, we're moving on. <laughs> we're moving on. God damn. That would have been a nice goal. That's okay. That's okay. That would have been a nice goal. And the goal of this is to score a nice goal so that we can be the best team in the league. You see, how do you like that segue? Do you? Because you should. You should. As I mean, really... Outside of a couple of losses here recently, we are doing pretty damn well. I'm going to be intrigued to see the stat line for some players. Uh, how a Jonathan Marcheseau has done recently. Of course, he's missed so much time. How a Marc-Andre Fleury is looking in terms of save percentage. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Liverpool almost scored again. <laughs> I should turn this game off. I should turn this game off. I can't help it. I can't help it. I'm drawn to it. You tell me, pick between recording a video and watching a Liverpool game. I won't choose. I'll do both. All right. January 1st of 2020, we're 25, 11, and 3 at this point. 25, 11, and 3. And we are on top of the Pacific Division. Well, how do you like that? Three points clear of LA with four games at hand. That is phenomenal. Panarin's a point of game player. 74 for the locker room chemistry. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Of course, we know Panarin. 20 goals, 20 assists. Crazy. Only 8 goals for Carlson, but 28 assists. That's not bad. Uh, he's just under a point a game player. Uh, and Jonathan Marcheseau has only played 16 games all year. He's got 14 points. That's not too bad at all either. Uh, Riley Smith, strong start to the year. Paul Stashney, hilarious. And Alex Tuck, 18 points. That's not bad either. It's not bad. Thomas Tatar, 25 points. Solid. Cody Eakin at 17. That's okay. Eric Halla, we'd like to see a little bit more out of him, but that's all right. Eight points for Carrier. Uh, Carpenter doing pretty well. And Ryan Reeves continues to score goals. Maybe he'll hit 10 this year. Uh, defensively, Shea Theodore, 21 points and a plus 10. Phenomenal. McNabb has been okay, given what he is. Same for Nate Schmidt. Colin Miller's done well. Four points for John Merrill is solid. And Nick Holden hasn't been terrible. So, 
I guess we're good with that. I think ideally when you want to talk about whether or not we're going to buy at the deadline is Flowers killing it and so is Malcolm Subban. Subban hasn't played a whole hell of a lot though. When you want to talk about potentially buying here at the deadline, obviously Nick Holden is the type of guy that we'd look to replace. Holden's on that one-year deal, so I'm not against bringing in reinforcements and potentially tanking his uh, morale. It wouldn't be the end of the world. The one problem, of course, is that really in terms of defensive prospects, we have Bronstrom and we have Nicholas Haig. Pretty much it as far as, you know, already on Vegas for prospects. So we are definitely going to need to deliver here in the next while as we build up this team through the draft. It's tempted to set up the trade block now. I'm going to wait we have a little bit of time. And I am kind of regretting. I want to make sure, of course, that I follow what happens at the deadline leading up to it. I always do a terrible job of that, of seeing, you know, what other teams are doing, signing top-notch free agents and stuff like that. Again, I get tunnel vision on our team. I only care about our team. I want to see how we're doing. I don't give a damn what other teams are doing. As we'll take a look at the draft class here. Let's see what we have. So, a mining... All right, well, it's no longer the Lafreniere draft. He's 17 years old. He has 15 points in 31 games in the SHL. <sighs> damn. Damn, 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 damn. The Finnish Gretzky. The Finnish Gretzky. That is insane. And whether or not we have the assets to trade up, we really don't. So, I don't know if I'm uh, if I'm betting on that. Christopher Palapus, Palapus, perhaps. You know me, great with names. Also, shout out to Ted Creamer. <laughs> Ted Creamer. We'll take a look at player morale here. What do we got? Who wants to talk? It's Nick Holden again. You're just so talkative, Nick. My ice time. You're on the third pairing. What the hell are you talking about, your ice time? You're a third pairing defenseman. And you're playing in the third pair. You've played 50 games. What are you, you've been hitting the sauce again, Nick? What's going on? Here, I'll be demanding this time. There you go. Firm approach for your drunken self. Fucking whip you into shape. Lay off the sauce. That's my first request. Wow. As we go through the all-star, but not all-star break, Ludwig or Lucas Elvenas. I always want to say Ludwig Elvenas. I think I had this uh, computer-generated player with that name where he was a player from before. We do need to take out Gage Quinney. And who are we going to put to replace you? It's going to be Mr. Elvenas. So that is that. Uh, Davidson, we're going to want to drop you down to the fourth line. Nick Henry at a 75, by the way. It's looking pretty good. That's looking top line worthy, to be honest. Can any of you play center? 73, beautiful. So we'll bump up Henry, put Colsar down on the second line. I mean, you know, with Cody Glass being up to a 77, he's NHL ready next year. He's going to play this one year here. Nick Suzuki might be NHL ready next year as well. Henry with that medium top nine potential was a smart signing at the very least. So we do have some players there. Defensively, Again, really the continued development of Braunstrom and Haig is also important. Scott Walford is. Oh, yeah, you're killing me with these. You're killing me with these. And I pray, I pray that you make these changes. Uh, so we could bring in Robin Salo or we could just play Christian Milanen. Salo's not going to develop. Uh, Tishka, low six. Right. Resignen is, we don't even know. Let's find out how good you are. You can't be that much worse than some of these other guys. Like I said, I knew it was going to be bad. I didn't know it was this bad for some of them. And it is. I'll get myself out of this situation if I have to. And people say, like, ah, oh, it's cheap for you to sign the guys and then get rid of them. Maybe. But it's also cheap for EA to not have the roster uh, be in a better spot by default. That's my argument. As the deadline is on the 27th. Let's go to the 16th. About a week and a half out from the deadline. That will give us time to know what exactly we need to look at. Because I can't imagine at this rate that we're not going to buy at the deadline. As Eichening goes down with an injured leg. That is oddly unspecific. 
Gail Flurry gains a little bit of morale. 34 wins now on the season, still battling. No games against LA in this first, uh, or in this month, really. Uh, down the stretch towards the end of March, I imagine, we'll be playing them. And those are going to be gigantic games for us. As Ikonen's back, so where was Quinny? Quinny was on the third line. Bembridge again a 65. It's definitely going to be some concerns about him and whether or not he was the right selection. I know that for a fact. We'll see what happens though. So Ikonen will get back into the lineup and let's go. We have three more games before we take a break to look at the roster and figure out how we want to set up the deadline. So we lose 8-2 to two to Columbus. But we do bounce back with a 5-3 win against the Rangers the next night. 37, 17, and 4 on the season. In first place by a pretty large margin over the LA Kings. We have to add to this team. We have to. We need to get that insurance. We need to get the help that can put us over the edge. So Artemi Panarin, dominating. William Carlson, 44 points. I'm okay with it. The closer you get to 60, the better. Uh, Jonathan Marcheseau has, I mean, really, he's been fine. 27 points in 35 games. Uh, Riley Smith has done well. Stashney's done well. Alex Tuck is still shaping up better as a third liner. I mean, 28 points in 58 games isn't bad, but you could be better as a true high-end third liner. Thomas Tatar, say what you want. He's doing phenomenally well. Holla, Cody Eakin... I mean, in terms of, like, William Carrier, the fourth line's been great as Ryan Reeves has hit 10 goals. I mean, all of them, or two out of three, are already over 20 points, or just shy. Never mind. I thought Reeves had 10 assists, too. My bad. So, you could argue we could get fourth line improvements, but everyone there is doing well. I mean, there is the minus three for Carrier. Uh, my argument would have been, okay, drop Carpenter, have Eakin be on the fourth line, but, I mean, 25 points for Eakin? 30-point season for him is fine. I'm good with that for my third line option. So in terms of what the hell we do here, I'm honestly not sure. I think, I mean, you could argue like, oh, well, another top six edition, but Thomas Tatar, we just give him a better opportunity. He could be a 50-point guy this year. So there is that argument. There are different ways I could see this going. We drop Ryan Carpenter from the lineup, which I don't like that idea at all. Basically, it would probably be dropping Carrier. It would be dropping Reeves or Carrier from the lineup which I don't think I like regardless, right? So it's like we could go with this setup, basically, and find someone new for the top six to replace Carrier. Or we go with this, basically. At least something similar to it. That might not be the worst way to go and just give Thomas Tatar the chance. We have options, and then, of course, defensively, Theodore's been phenomenal. Uh, McNabb hasn't done anything point total wise since the last time we looked, but that's okay. We don't expect that from him. 13 points for Schmidt. Schiller's been solid. Merrill's been all right. The big thing here would be replacing Nick Holden and moving Nick Holden into more of a depth role and bringing in another high-level defenseman, if at all possible. The big thing that we have to decide is what do we want to do offensively? Do we want to shore up our bets? And bring in someone else for the top six and probably drop Carrier or Reeves from the lineup. Drop Eakin down to the fourth line. Or do we just bring in that defensive help? Like I said, we could give Thomas Tatar the chance on that second line. Or we could really stack the third line. Have the third line be Tatar, Halla, Tuck. And who knows who we could end up getting. So what we're going to do is let's take a quick look around the league. I do want to see who's on the trade block. Now, it's not a set rule that we have to trade or can only trade in using the trade block, but it does make sense to try and get players back for cheap. And immediately, Josh Manson, Cam Fowler, Silverberg, there's a lot of money there. There's a lot of money there, though. And I highly doubt they are interested in retaining salary. Ron Hainsey's also there on a two-year deal. Jesus. But they do have somebody uh, like a Brock Nelson who wouldn't exactly be that major addition to the team, but he's not exactly killing it either. So don't know if there's anybody on Anaheim that we'd like to go for. And again, you look at the money and the long-term deals there. Uh, would it be the right move to bring in Josh Manson at this point in time? 
Maybe, maybe not. I mean, definitely, I probably wouldn't go for Fowler. Uh, there's an argument that maybe like a Josh Manson wouldn't be terrible if we could afford to do it, but that would mean moving out somebody that's already in the top four. So I think we'd want to be looking for more of a rental. Arizona, in terms of a rental option, it would be Chase on, who's not, you know, none of these guys are what we're really looking for here, so I wouldn't say the answer's there. Uh, Zborl and Lauko, nothing really there from Boston. Buffalo, Honka, Fellows, and Stahlberg, nothing there. Calgary, there we go. Okay, so like in Calgary, that could work with Brody as an option, Hamannick as an option as well. Uh, like someone like Froelich isn't really what we're looking for in terms of like a true top six uh, you know, move to bolster that up. Uh, but so far, like Brody or Hamannick, uh, Brody minus 16, 18 points. Neither of them are having the best season, though. So it's something to factor in. Carolina, TVR, not really that much better than what we already have. So I don't think there's anyone there in Carolina that we'd really be looking to get. Chicago is, wow, they re-signed Kunitz for two years. There's nobody there in Chicago we'd want to get either. Colorado, Troppin? How the hell is, yeah, there's no way Trotman has that much value. <laughs> I love Zach Trotman. That's that's not the case. There's nobody in Colorado that we're really interested in. I don't know if we're going to find our Justin Williams this year. And as it is, he left. He walked for nothing. Uh, Martin Hansel, offensively, Martin Hansel has played one game. Is he hurt? Why has he only played one game? He's played three games. Like, is he just a healthy scratch? I Yeah, we're I'm intrigued by that. We're going nowhere near him, I can tell you that much. Uh, Detroit, nobody that we'd be interested in. Edmonton, Cassie and Brower, absolutely not. Florida, nobody. L.A., nobody there. Minnesota, shopping Grandland. I don't know if we'd want Grandland to be a rental. He has 31 points this year. But all, uh, other options include Eric Stahl. Oof. 35 years old, but 40-point season thus far. Eric Stahl, Miku Koivu, Charlie Coyle, they could be more affordable rentals. Never mind with Charlie Coyle. He's not putting up points. But Miku Koivu or Eric Stahl, I'd probably rather go for Stahl because it would be so weird to see Koivu on another team. Uh, but Eric Stahl, Granlin would be probably too expensive, but Eric Stahl as a rental option might not be the worst way to go man at minnesota they're just looking to move on from everybody here uh, everyone in ten, ending up on that block apparently montreal nobody there nashville uh, yakov trenin but no <laughs> new jersey oh my god well don't know if we'd be able to pull that off with trade value. Just calling that a hunch. I could set up the block in a way that might encourage them to send me an offer, but I highly doubt it. Sammy Votnin is also there, but he's having a miserable season in New Jersey right now as a minus 20, so I don't know if he's the best option to go for. Uh, Taylor Hall, though, still doing really well. I don't know. It's, I doubt it, right? Just for what we have value-wise. Uh, nobody in New York... Nobody in New York. Shout out to X Tech. Ottawa, Borowiecki. Shout out to <laughs> Eugene Melnick's favorite player on the Sens. Probably calls him Mark Borowiecki, if anything. Uh, Philly. Nobody there. Three good prospects, but nobody that we're interested in. We have limited options here. We have limited options. I really like the Eric Stahl move. Uh, potentially out of Calgary with the defensive help limited options like i said now as we get a look here and it's good that we took a look at this because as we take a look around the league we know what the situation is it makes it that much easier to be like okay should we rely on thomas tatar or not and i am going to leave that up to you guys i'm not going to handle this on my own i want your feedback i want your input let me know what you think do we trust thomas tatar and the team that is already established to continue to carry the way. I mean, right now we are in first place in the division. Or do we go out and get someone like an Eric Stahl to bolster the offense? And the same thing defensively. Did we see anybody there on a one-year deal outside of a Brody or a Hamannick that could really be a difference maker on defense to replace Nick Holden and to make the team that much better? Goaltending-wise, we know we're pretty much good to go. 
with Flurry and with Subban. Although Malcolm's struggling a little bit, but he's going nowhere. We're just going to trust him at this point. So I want to know what you think. But so far, so good with the team that we have built outside, of course, of, uh, <laughs> of you know, some of, the, some of the guys we signed to fill out the... To fill out the AHL roster, of course, uh, might might end up, you know, working a little bit of magic to get rid of them. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I again, I knew they'd be bad. I didn't know they would be that bad. But seventy-eight points a week and a half out from the deadline is one hell of a place to be. Number one in the Pacific Division, fifth in the NHL. Toronto, Columbus, Boston. I mean, you know, only three teams have made it over 80 points. We're on 78. We're up there. We're looking good. Goals four per game at a 2-8-3, uh, which isn't drastically up there, but it's pretty solid. Goals against at a 2-4-1. Not, you know, not in the basement, but we're looking okay. And yes, that was a weird glitch where it showed the Islanders instead of the Preds. I like what we're doing thus far. It's just whether or not we end up making the right moves here before this deadline, and maybe the right move is to do nothing to make sure that we end up having a better playoff showing than we did last year. So I'm looking forward to what you guys have to think. Let me know down in the comments below. I thank you for watching this video. I do have a recommendation, a suggestion, though. If you haven't checked out the 10,000 subscriber video yet, feel free to do so. Uh, you don't have to listen to me, uh, you know, rant and ramble about the history of this channel. But I am doing, at the very least, an attachment Q&A to that. There will be a follow-up. So feel free to take part in that if it interests you. Because I, I, I don't know why it would. I don't feel like I'm that interesting of a person. But people apparently disagree. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.